The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus Old Age, Chapter 2nd When the World Grew Old The next morning, when Santa Claus opened his eyes and gazed round the familiar room, which he had feared he might never see again, he was astonished to find his old strength renewed and to feel the red blood of perfect health coursing through his veins. He sprang from his bed and stood where the bright sunshine came in through his window and flooded him with its merry, dancing rays. He did not then understand what had happened to restore him to the vigor of youth, but in spite of the fact that his beard re remained the color of snow and that wrinkles still lingered in the corners of his bright eyes, old Santa Claus felt as brisk and merry as a boy of sixteen, and was soon whistling contentedly as he busied himself fashioning new toys. Then Ock came to him and told of how the mantle of immortality and how Claus had won it through his love for little children. It made old Santa look grave for a moment, think he had been so favored, but it also made him glad to realize that now he need never fear for being parted from his dear ones. At once he began making preparations for making a remarkable assortment of pretty and amusing playthings, and in larger quantities than ever before. For now that he might always devote himself to his work, he decided that no child in the world, rich or poor, should hereafter go without a Christmas gift, if he could manage to supply it. The world was new in the days when dear old Santa Claus first began toy-making, and won, by his loving deeds, the mantle of immortality. And the task of supplying cheering words, sympathy, and pretty playthings to all the young of his race did not seem a difficult undertaking at all. But every year, more and more children were born into the world, and these, when they grew up, began spreading slowly all over the face of the earth, seeking new homes, so that Santa Claus found each year that his journeys must extend farther and farther from the Laughing Valley, and his pack of toys must be made larger and ever larger. So at length he took counsel with his fellow immortals, how his work might be kept pace with the increasing number of children that none might be neglected. And the immortals were so greatly interested in his labors that they gladly rendered him their assistance. Ak gave him his man Kilter, the silent and swift. The Nook Prince gave him Peter, who was more crooked and less surly than any of his brothers. And the real prince gave him Nuther, the sweetest temper real ever known. And the Fairy Queen gave him Whisk, that tiny, mischievous, but lovable fairy who uh, knows uh, t today almost as many children as does Santa Claus himself. With these people to help make the toys and uh, to keep his house in order and to look after the sledge and the harness, Santa Claus found it a much easier to prepare his yearly load of gifts, and his days began to follow one another smoothly and pleasantly. Yet, after a few generations, his worries were renewed, for it was remarkable how the pe number of people continued to grow, and how many more children there were every year to be served. When the people filled all the cities and lands of one country, they wandered uh, into another part of the world, and the men cut down the trees in many of the great forests that had been ruled by Ak, and the wood uh, they built in new cities, where the forests had been uh, were fields of grain and herds of browsing cattle. You might think that the master woodsman would rebel at the loss of his forest, but not so. The wisdom of Ak was mighty and far-seeing. This world was made for men, he said he to Santa Claus, and I have but guarded the forests until men needed them for their use. I am glad my strong trees can furnish shelter from men's weak bodies and warm them through cold winters, but I hope they will not cut down all the trees, for mankind needs the shelter of the woods in summer as much as the warmth of blazing logs in winter. And however crowded the world may grow, I do not think men will ever come to Burzee, nor the great black forest, nor to the wooded wilderness of Braz, unless they seek their shade for pleasure, and not to destroy their giant trees. By and by, people made ships uh, from the tree trunks, and crossed over oceans and built cities and far lands, but the oceans made little difference to the journeys of Santa Claus. His reindeer sped over the waters as swiftly as over land, 
and his sledge headed uh, from east to west and followed in the wake of the sun. So that as the earth uh, rolled slowly over, Santa Claus had all of 24 hours to encircle it each Christmas Eve, and the speedy reindeer enjoyed these wonderful journeys more and more. So, year after year, generation after generation, and century after century, the world grew older and the people became more numerous, and the labors of Santa Claus steadily increased. The fame of his good deeds spread to every household where children dwelt, and all the little ones loved him dearly, and the fathers and mothers honored him for the happiness he had given them when they too were young, and the aged grandsires and granddames remembered him with tender gratitude and blessed his name. <laughs>